Right, so it's time to correct one of my mistakes. The entrance to train is quite shallow and it's low tide and this rather large vessel was just grounded. Graham Gaynor from Living the Dream. Living the Dream. Living the Live in the, the dream. dream. Live in the dream. What the heck does that mean? Yesterday we were in um, Largs, um, after we got the sail fixed we came to uh, Millport. Yeah, we came to Millport uh, to go onto a mooring and look at this mooring rope. This mooring is rated to 15 tonnes and I have to be truthful, I believe every word of that. but. We still like to be safe, so what we've got is we've got another rope through that to a cleat at the back. So regardless of what happens, um, we're not going anywhere. But uh, as I say, with this is little Millport, and um, the moorings here, some of the moorings are free. Uh, however, there is an honesty box, so you can you know make a contribution which we will be doing so uh, but I have to say they're pretty uh, ace and over there uh, there's a little island and uh, that's where the seals frequent and uh, a lot of the time they sound like they're singing they're singing seals as far as Beverly is concerned but mainly at the moment they're complaining in the fact that their island is disappearing Right, so it's time to correct one of my mistakes. Um, when I put the dry mat in, I did it right up to the edge on both sides. What I should have done was I should have done it about eight centimetres above the edge because that's the height of the mattress because the mattress sits against the outer walls and picks up moisture. Where it sits on the dry mat, it's absolutely fine and it stays bone dry. So I need this to be 16 centimetres wider than it is. So what we're going to do is slide the whole thing that way, eight centimetres, cut a new bit that we've bought, stick it to this side and that'll do the job. Yeah, we've actually got a, quite a big piece of uh, dry mat because that's what they had at Largs. Uh, so we're just going to see what looks best and uh, sort it out. But that's what we do. Ian Bev. Well, we've put this piece in and we've made a mark along the edge. And that's going to be the new top. And we've moved this, the other side up so that it's high as well. And then... This bit here will have a piece put into it at this level all the way back to finish that piece off. The nice thing about this is it can all be finished with cable ties. You just put cable ties on it and it all goes in. Right, okay. Okay, so that's the uh, job complete. Now all it is a case of put the boat back to lock in something reasonable because at the moment it's just a ma a pile of duvets and cushions. Well, if you're mad enough to decide that um, you fancy the cruising lifestyle, um, then, um, <sighs> you know, your days are very different from one day to the other day. Yesterday we went to Largs um, and because we were in a marina, we took the sails up to Saturn Sails. Uh, once that was done, um, Beverly socialised her video that she'd created. I did some work for some three clients. Um, and then after we'd done all that, we got the sails back, we put the sail up. And then we came to Millport, which was like just three nautical miles away. Took up a mooring ball. And that was the day. We're now in Millport. We've um, done the dry matting on the bed. And now we're going to go off in the dinghy. So 
your days are incredibly varied. No day is like the next day. Um, and then tomorrow it's sail day because we'll be staying here at Millport tonight and then tomorrow we'll be sailing somewhere different. So again, another different day. The rain meant that Millport was quite quiet, but we saw Britain's narrowest house and we found the Hebrides' cathedral. But most important of all, we found a traditional sweet shop. Beverly couldn't um, resist going into the sweet shop, could you, Bev? Yep, The entrance to train is quite shallow and it's low tide and this rather large vessel was just grounded and I don't know whether he's stuck and he's going to have to wait to float off or whether he'll be able to reverse backwards. No, he's got some movement. But I would not want to be in that, stuck in that entrance. Well, I'm glad to see he's managed to cut himself loose and he's gone back to his berth. And now we're in Largs, um, where we're meeting one of our subscribers. Um, basically, they've just contacted us through our Facebook page and, um, you know, messaged us. So if you, you're a subscriber, then you can message us. And if we can, then, yeah, we will come down and say hello. And that's what we're doing today. Graham. Gaynor. From Living the Dream. Living the Dream. Living the, the dream. dream. Living the Dream. Living the Dream. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> it means whatever you want it to mean. Uh huh. Life is for Living. Living. So that's Living the Dream. Absolutely. So are you living are you Gaynor? Yeah. Are you and Beverly living living? The dream. I don't know if it's the dream and I don't know whose dream it could be, but we're certainly living reality. <laughs> well, reality is reality. That's a bit of an oxymoron. Are you not living life to the way you want to live life? Yes, I am living life the but way I is, want to live then the that life. that is the dream. It is. I, um, I've decided how I want to live my life. And then I'm just trying to find some money to pay for it later. <laughs> <laughs> it's money. I know. I know. It's, it's a just necessary it's, it's evil. It's something that we all need to be able to provide. Until you win the Euro Lottery. Uh, 
Yeah, well, I can tell you now I didn't. Can I because... film you guys? Yeah, in a second. Thanks to Graham and Fiona from Living the Dream for such a great day. We had a blast. It's a rather grey day, I'm afraid. But we've got our sails up. And um, we're going... Oh, what we're doing... But we're doing 4.7 knots over ground and Bev and I as long as you know as long as we're making progress we feel quite happy with that but we're going to be tacking today because uh, we're going off to Lamlash because we've um, come out of Troon uh, we saw um, our subscriber met up with him um, I had a chat did some work I know we don't like that W word, but never mind, we still have to do it. <laughs> and now uh, we're going off to Lamlash. So I'm hoping that I would be doing an anchorage. Um, but at least I um, um, got us out of the um, Troon today. So um, so I entered Troon on my own with Bev, just guided me a bit, and I've left Troon. So I'm happy enough with that for my challenges. Uh, just want to try and get an anchor in again if I can. We know that we're well balanced when Annie is doing very little. Um, when we were coming down to Troon, Annie was having to work quite hard uh, because of the swell. Um, there is some swell at the moment, uh, so obviously she's compensating for that. Um, but there's not much and she's just not having to work very hard so that means that you know that your, bat, your sails are nicely balanced and the other thing I like Bev likes to look for and I do too and look at those little telltales at the end yeah they're nicely flying she's looking for that but what I'm looking for is the silence or the quietness. Listen to this. Yep, that's sailing for you. Beautifully quiet. 